device-based policies in retail environments that you do things like kiosk and public use computers, which are very, very cool. In a corporate environment, they allow you to set the device level policies. So anything that happens on the device, like limiting the users, like managing the enrollment of devices, like restricting who can log into the devices, stopping your team from logging into a work device with their Gmail accounts, as an example. Any of those device level policies which are managed with user accounts or pertain to the sessions that happen on a local device are all managed via the device level policy for Chrome. What are the advantages of benefits of a small business signing up and paying for a enterprise Chrome device license? It's 50 US dollars per year. And why would this be useful for a business? So if you're using Chrome devices, whether it's a Chromebook or a Chromebox, or if you're rolling out Chrome OS Flex, which you can install on any computer you like and turn it into a Chrome device, you have the option of upgrading to a Chrome enterprise license. Now these used to be called device management licenses, and now they're just called enterprise management licenses. Now what that does is it effectively unlocks a lot of really cool features for your Chrome devices. Now, you don't have to be on Workspace Enterprise. These are absolutely fine to use on a business plan, but the main thing that this opens up is the use of a lot more policies for Chrome, and specifically device policies. And so you saw probably in previous sections or previous videos that I've created on how to create workspace device policies for user settings inside of Chrome, and they'll be applied to anything inside Google Chrome. Any user that's logged into Google Chrome is gonna have the user settings applied, but if you wanna apply device level settings, well then you need to have a device management license, which is now called a Chrome Enterprise license. So what are some of the things that you can do with a device management policy? Well, you could do things like change the background wallpaper, of your staff computer. You could do things like set up a kiosk. So if you have, let's say, a public use computer that's maybe in a library or in a retail environment or you know in some kind of open environment where you want people to get access to it, maybe you want to set a 10 minute or a 30 minute timer for someone to have a session length on that machine. You want them to be logged out after a certain period of time. Maybe you want to set up your machines to automatically have deployed certain types of kiosk software like if you're running a remote desktop application like Citrix or another kind of virtual desktop application or even Microsoft Remote Desktop, which runs on Chrome devices, you can have the Chrome device boot and automatically open up a kiosk mode where all they see is the virtual desktop interface and then that person just logs in to that interface. So they don't even have a desktop experience of working with Google Chrome. Maybe you want to use a Chrome device as a signage solution. If you have a Chrome bit or a small Chrome box, which are small itty bitty Chrome devices, which are designed to be just plugged into the back of a TV and run 24 hours a day as a signage app, where well, you can actually use Google Chrome as a digital signage solution. And for that, you use a device policy to push down remotely any applications or push down remotely any signage apps or services that you want to have running. Now imagine this, imagine you have a storefront or you have a series of storefronts and you want to manage what is advertised in those screens. What would usually have to happen in the old days is you'd go around with a USB stick and it would have a video file on it and you'd plug it into each one of those TVs. Or maybe you would post it to each one of your store managers and then have to move it around and place it in there. But what you can do with a Chrome device is as long as that Chrome device has access to Wi-Fi, it's self-updating, it's monitored centrally and centrally managed, and you can have dynamic content appearing on those devices because they're connected to the internet and you can create dynamic content with some of the screen builder apps, which are very cool. So device-based policies in retail environments let you do things like kiosk and public use computers, which are very, very cool. In a corporate environment, they allow you to set the device level policies. So anything that happens on the device, like limiting the users, like managing the enrollment of devices, like restricting who can log into the devices, stopping your team from logging into a work device with their Gmail accounts, as an example. Any of those device level policies which are managed with user accounts or pertain to the sessions that happen on a local device are all managed via the device level policy for Chrome. Now, if you're integrating into a hybrid environment, like maybe you have some kind of open directory or you have a Windows directory on Azure that you'd like to connect with, where you can actually use Chrome devices to connect to Microsoft Active Directory, but you need the enterprise licenses for that as well. They now, I believe, 
natively connect to Active Directory using the enterprise licenses, which is pretty cool. But if you want to integrate your directory with Google Workspace and Microsoft directories as well, that is also an option. Now, if you're interested in getting some help with that, one of our businesses is called Onsite Helper, and that business is designed and suited to helping larger organizations with hybrid environments with both Google and Microsoft operating systems. So if you've got more than 30 or 40 employees, if you're a large organization, maybe you've got hundreds or even thousands of people in the business, I'll click on the link down below and you should be able to get access to Onsite Helper, which is our mid-sized business brand that helps out larger businesses with more technical support for your Google Workspace account. Or you can just head to onsitehelper.com. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.